it is difficult for people to immediately understand socio-cyberneering because it is not like anything this is a else new that you're familiar with. Socio-cyberneering. And this is his inventor, the extraordinary Jacques Fresco. He's my guest this weekend on News Weekend. My guest is an extraordinary Miamian, Dr. Jacques Fresco. Uh, I could go through all the things that Dr. Fresco has done. He's a social engineer, industrial engineer, designer, inventor, uh, consultant, was a consultant for Rotocraft Helicopter, director of scientific research laboratories Los Angeles, designed and copyrighted various items, ranging from drafting instruments to x-ray units, uh, has had works published in the Architectural Record, Popular Mechanics, Saturday Review, uh, and has been a technical and psychological consultant to the motion picture industry member of the Air Force Design Development Unit at Wright Field, uh, developed the electrostatic anti-icing systems, uh, designed prefabricated aluminum houses. What, what does it say in your driver's license? <laughs> what is the occupation? Industrial designer. There aren't too many people that have seen everything that he's gone through in the past and come out of it with a certain direction. And the, the interesting thing is, too, that he's not a philosopher that talks about how the world should be, his point of view. He's a technician that understands how it can be built and has worked with people and understands what it takes to change them and understands what it, what it was that made them that way. So it's really based on hands-on learning and not reading something in a book. You know, he went through the experiences himself and, and came out with the conclusions he did did because it was based on actually learning experience and experiments. Now you're brought up to believe, I, be, I believe this, that everyone should have a right to their own opinion. Is that the way you were brought up? Yes, sir. Okay. When you got everybody going around giving their opinion, I'll tell you what's wrong with Jim, see? They've got all kinds of opinions. But when engineers talk to each other, they don't say, believe me. They say, see this new metal? It can hold up 4,000 pounds per square inch. He puts it in a machine and pulls it apart. He says, you're right. So I would say the majority of the people of the world today are unsane, not insane. Unsane meaning having been exposed to methods of evaluation that are long rendered obsolete. Our language in the future will change to a saner language where we have no argument in it. They say, well, can there be such a language? There is. When engineers talk to each other, it's not subject to interpretation. They use math, they use descriptive systems. If I interpreted what another engineer said in the way I think he meant it, you couldn't build bridges, you couldn't build dams, you couldn't build power transmission lines. The language has to have meaning. That's why when a doctor writes a prescription, if he prints it, you know, it's the same all over the world. So the world I'm talking about is different. The core mechanism of democratic process in the future by design is the use of public exhibition halls. With the exhibition hall, everyone has the opportunity to participate in establishing the priorities with which the society is governed. So just like a World's Fair, to show you what's new, what is available, you can look around and say, I'd like one of those, or I can use that sort of thing in my kitchen, whatever it is. And then they always invite comment, if something new comes up, what do you think about it? Do you feel it's sufficient? Do you feel there's shortcomings? enter into your computer your point of view regarding this. So you have a built-in democracy. You have a participatory culture where all people participate, and that is in a constant process so that people will know up to the minute what is coming out, what exists, what is available, what is not available. In other words, there'd be many bulletins and many publications and visualizations of what is needed. So all the world's people will be informed constantly of what we don't know, what is needed badly, and asking for suggestions and papers and ideas from everybody. I just want to say this to you, that all the marvels and wonders of technology can amount to nothing unless it elevates humans to their highest potential. This is the aim 
of the future by design. Now, we'll start with this, and you tell me... I'll try what, to point it out. Yeah, you can point right at it. All of the new cities will be a university, in essence. The center of the city, the nucleus, will house an electronic computer, which only controls the weather, water purification, the atmospheric conditions, that is, it controls air contamination systems. The computers do not, I say it again, do not control people. They maintain safety. They oversee the environment, maintain ecological balance between animal life and plant life. All the machines do is control the physical entities that comprise the environment. The center of the city is a university, a university that covers all subjects related to man. It is not a commercial university. It is not based on any, there's no courses that are used to exploit or abuse any other human being. All business courses will be phased out. All repetitious jobs will be phased out. We feel that machines ought to do the filthy or the repetitious or the boring jobs. That man has to be free to pursue the higher things, the higher possibilities of man. In other words, if this is the medical unit, this little branch, and if you work in this center, you may live in the garden cities that surround the center. You don't have to, you can if you will. Each of the garden cities contain lakes, recreation areas, and between cities, we let everything go back to, to nature. Will computers be able to control the weather? Uh, this is a hmm. relatively easy project to manage. Easy to control? Yes. You could control the weather? I can go into that with you in a little while. All right. Uh, can I finish that? Well, okay. Sorry, On please. the outer rim of the city, we have the agricultural belt. All of your garbage is compressed and pumped, recycled out to the agricultural belt. There are no garbage trucks. There are no dump fields. We use everything. All waste is recycled. This is an ecological program. All right, now, the, the, this is what the total city... The total city looks like this. There are circular conveyor belts that take you anywhere in the city in three minutes. The city population in this particular city is 15,000. We have larger cities designed, up to two million. The cities are all immersed in beautiful gardens. There are no trees in a row. It is not a mechanical environment. It is essentially a city immersed in the second Garden of Eden, where there are lakes, recreation areas, art centers, music centers, cultural centers, and surrounding the city, we have the agricultural belt where we grow foods hydroponically. Between cities, we let everything go back to nature, the deer, the coyote, the entire uh, ecological balance is maintained. We grow foods how? Hydroponically. What's that? Soilless agriculture in some instances, and in other instances, we use conventional agriculture, which we'll get down to in the drawings as mm. we go through the subject. All right. What? Imagine a world where the weather didn't matter, a world where you could grow tomatoes, lettuce, and a whole host of other fruits and vegetables, even when it's 30 below. Welcome to Ted Marshallden's world. We can be indoors, so you could set this like clockwork. It's high noon all day, every day, 24-7. In Ted's world, plants aren't affected by drought, cold, or any other plight affecting farmers today. And unlike a greenhouse, he doesn't need daylight or much space. Ted calls this the future of farming. Everybody's moving into the cities. Uh, we're 50% of the population in North America is in the cities. They figure this is going to go up to 80%. So we've stacked up people, but we have not stacked up farming. Plants are grown in these stacked up, slow rotating cylinders. Using the cylinder means each plant is bathed in equal light. If the plants were laid out flat, he'd have to use six times more light. The moving cylinders have another benefit as well. Plants are trying to right themselves against gravity whenever they're not perpendicular to the ground. So if you turn a tomato plant on its side, a nice pliable weak old tomato plant, it will make a 90 degree turn back up against gravity in 15 minutes. And here's the really cool part. Ted says because the plants are constantly turning in the cylinder, they're always fighting against gravity. And that constant battle forces extra nutrients to the stems, making bigger, stronger, faster growing plants. We've noticed as much as a factor five increase in the growth rate of the plants versus something that's just sitting stagnant, uh, even with the same conditions. We did uh, romaine lettuce. The seed packet said 60 to 75 days, and we were done in 15 days. 
He says he uses about 1% of the water used on a field farm and far less space. If you give me a 10-story building with an acre of uh, footprint, I, my calculations are I can turn that into about 400 acres of field farm production equivalency. Ted says farmers could potentially grow fields of food anywhere. All right, Jacques. And this represents a variation of the circular scheme. Most of the cities are based on natural configurations, the atomic structure, basic designs in nature. The center of the city might be related to studies of the human organism. This center here may be studies of diseases of the eye, other systems, diseases of the nervous system, an all-out research project on enhancing the lives of men. There are no military programs or projects in socio-cybernearing. You know, people, uh, before I show this lesson, people, uh, just so you know, you know, that uh, a lot of this is wondrous to you, and it is to me, of course, but uh, Dr. Fresco is a respected social engineer, industrial designer, designer and inventor, PhD in human factors engineering, and has worked on many things from uh, handy icing systems to prefabricated aluminum houses, designed systems for noiseless and pollution-free aircraft, wrote the book Looking Forward, he has lectured uh, at the Department of Sociology in Princeton on Sociology of the Future, guest at the College Editors Environmental Conference in Washington, lectured at Queens College, New York, University of South Florida, University of California, designed various items ranging from drafting instruments to x-ray units. And uh, so, you know, don't just dismiss this. If he says it's possible, it's possible. What's this? But the entire money-structured and materialistic-oriented society is a false society. Ten or fifteen years from now, our society will go down in history as the lowest development in man. We have the brains, the know-how, the technology, and the feasibility to build an entirely new civilization. You believe that uh, we, we teach competition that is not bred into some... And competition is dangerous, socially offensive, considered right and normal, because you are brought up to that value system. What kind of competition did Jesus have? What kind of competition is there in your body? Suppose your brain said, I'm the most important organ, and the liver said, I am, and I want to go a free enterprise system. You'd rot away in a month if every organ of your body went out for itself. Socio-cyberneering does not appeal to governments, to private enterprise. We're going to do this thing just as the automobile phased out the stagecoach, just as television stepped in and phased out the old vaudeville and the old motion pictures, that history and technology is respecters of no society, no individual opinions, but it moves on, and we've got to be prepared to face the future. In your society, there are no mayors of cities. There, there are, are no mayors, there are no politicians, and you don't have to fill out any forms to go to the art center or music center, and you go to a university whether you can afford it or not. You don't have to use any of the system today. Let me briefly say this. You have a bumper in front of your car, behind your car. But your society, your car's hit on the side also. You have safety belts and harnesses in your car. But that assumes that you're going to hit, be hit by the rear or in front. If you're hit on a side, you go right through the side of the windshield. What good are these approaches? They are designed by men that are cerebral insufficiency. You've got to design a society with a bumper all around the car, phase out human drivers, put electronic guidance systems in cars, or eliminate the automobile and design a holistic transportation system. We must put our mind to this as we do to put a man on the moon. We must put our mind to the social problem. We wish to get away from politics. We wish to get away from the old world method of solving problems. This is clean sources of power. By utilizing the natural heat of the earth, that is volcanic energy, or the magma, or the molten lava under the earth, of which there are approximately 500 potentials. If we tap a, m a mountain in Hawaii called Mount Aloha, we can get enough power to electrify the world. We can get enough power from that volcano alone. We have 500 potential volcanoes we can harness. We can use that natural heat from the volcano. No smog, no smoke, no dirt, no gases, no fuels, no oil spills, and no more burning of fuels in any city to generate power. If Japan used Fujiyama, they don't need to burn oil. They don't need oil. All of that heat is sitting there, 20 million years of power right under the Earth's surface. In fact, you don't even need to use fusion power or nuclear power, and it's easy to tap, and it's clean and available. 
as soon as we make up our minds to put scientists rather than on weapons, nerve gas, on harnessing the earth power that is already here. It would take 10 years to change the surface of the earth, to rebuild the world into a second Garden of Eden. The choice lies with you. The stupidity of a nuclear arms race, the development of weapons, trying to solve your po problems politically by electing this political party or that political party, that all politics is immersed in corruption. Let me say it again. Communism, socialism, fascism, the Democrats, the liberals, we want to absorb human beings, women's lib, all organizations that believe in a better life for man. There are no Negro problems or Polish problems or Jewish problems or Greek problems or women's problems. They're human problems. To come into socio cybernearing and take your part and function. We are not concerned with the divisions of segments of society. No uh, control of population? Population control is dependent upon education. We feel an educated population needs no control. You wouldn't stop sex? No, sir. Mm. Good yeah. move, Jacques. Privilege, Privilege to serve members of society. Not that we want rewards or medals or honor for what we do, because it is just an honor to do it. And if you cannot work for that, then you miss the boat. You don't understand the teachings of the wisest men that ever lived. 